Seeing through themes, exploring the design space of privacy-aware data enabled objects. This paper is published in Tokai Journal in 2022. This research is held by the collaboration between two universities. The authors are Yuting Chen, Matthias Fang, Ronghui Liang, and Lingling Chen. So, first questions you may ask: What is data enabled object? So data enabled object is a type of research objects that has data capturing capabilities and can be integrated into daily activities to capture data about people's detailed whereabouts, behaviors, and routines. These objects can provide data perspectives on everyday life for contextual design research. For example, studying people's unconscious or private behaviors prompting people to have more grounding responses during interviews, or engaging people to discover hidden practice in their familiar routines through data perspectives. However, data-enabled objects are still computational devices. Unless explicitly programmed, they cannot adapt their data collection mechanisms to react to different situations. They can be insensitive and raise privacy concerns from the participants. While well, researchers may provide information letter and consent form for participants to read and sign, they may oversimplify the privacy requirement, which is not just a yes and no questions, but it is context-dependent hidden in our social norm. As a result, design researchers can face a dilemma in employing data-enabled objects. They may ask, are the risks worth the benefits? So this work aims at exploring how privacy design can address the tension between participant privacy and ethnography needs. Apart from privacy guidelines and legislation pertaining to data protection, ideas about privacy remain highly subjective, varying from person to person. To better understand an individual's privacy requirements, we create in-situ experiences with data capturing devices to study real reactions and identify potential privacy design space. We invited 75 bachelor-level design students, which were grouped into 18 teams, to actually design, build, and deploy data-enabled objects into the practice. We look into their design process, reflections, and feedbacks from their participants to construct design space for privacy-aware data-enabled objects. We developed a toolkit to provide design researchers and the technical support. Furthermore, to better identify common and different points from multiple cases, our toolkit was built on an existing example to ask them to redesign the same types of data-enabled objects. And this toolkit is the Date Connected Pickup Toolkit, CPT. So we built CPT that includes first a camera called Pickup Cam, which has an interactive closure, a notification sound, and an interactive flag. We upgraded to be embedded with additional local Wi Fi router and data storage memory. Design teams were asked to redesign this camera into a privacy aware object but designing additional sensing objects to track changing situations. To do so, design teams receive two ESP boards and one processing code. They can attach ESP boards onto the sensing objects they design. This board transfers the sensing data to the Peekaboo. At the same time, they can add the processing code via the local Peekaboo hotspot to remotely control the camera using these sensing objects. And finally, a data sharing interface called Data Canvas is embedded in the Peekaboo Cam. Design teams can connect to the interface via Wi Fi hotspots, enabling debriefings of all captured data for both design researchers and participants. And with the CPT, we successfully enabled 18 different privacy aware system designs in 18 different home contacts, such as balcony, kitchen, door entrance, and bathroom and then explore how to design data in other objects that can engage in human activities to capture contextual data without intervening human practice. And how can the object provide stakeholders with a desired level of control? And then finally, how to make objects better enact their autonomous capabilities as context changing. So we conduct the MATI analysis and identify five different design spaces 
including form, notification of data capturing, observational perspective, interactions of data capturing. And finally, the data processing and mapping. And these findings can be seen in our paper. So finally, our work identified that our CPT create a controllable intervention, which facilitate a lived ethnographically observable experiences in a domestic context. The CPT make researchers and participants both take an active role in determining what to observe and capture during the research phases. Yet the CPT still provided openness for designers to adjust the tension between ethnography and privacy needs through interaction design. As such, designers gain insights into privacy that can only be identified in real-life contexts. And finally, we also reflect that privacy is often seen as a constraint for designers and researchers who need data. However, from our exploration with 18 teams, we found that privacy design should be seen as a driver rather than a blocker. Our student case showed that participants can become collaborators, capturing and sharing unexpected photos with data-enabled objects. This enriched the data collection with additional semantics and the participants become co-ethnographers. Taken together, our contributions present an optimistic outlook on privacy-aware practice in design ethnography. Future work could explore more different types of controllable intervention to encourage designers to design privacy as a driver and address the complex interplay between data collection interests, data ownership, and sensitive information.